Hey everybody, I have a video here today and I have had a lot of comments and questions from people in Florida so I thought we would go look at a site today down by Lake Okeechobee in Palm Beach County. This was called Big Mound City and this came from about 2500 years ago, about 500 BC and there is really nothing to be seen on Google Earth. You can make out a couple mound sites here but this place is kind of forgotten to history, and this is one I'm glad to do. But what was here? Well, we have had earthworks in sites in the middle of the country and places in Ohio and Kentucky and Indiana and other places. Well, this place here, mounds, earthworks, and some of the more impressive ones coming from the ancient United States, and I was really surprised at this one. This is one I did not know about. But here is a site on Google Earth. Not much to be seen today, but you can make out a few features here. And this is what it looked like about 2,500 years ago when trees were removed and this was a big village. This covered about 150 acres and this was huge. There was large mounds, earthworks, pathways. And this is right in southern Florida. But here is a diagram of what was here in Palm Beach County about 2,500 years ago. And that's when they speculate this place was originally built. Now there was originally about 20 mounds here. And what these alignments are and pathways and hinges and earthworks, well, it's all up for speculation. Seems there was work done here about 100 years ago. And then this place has been grown over and lost to time and memory. Now there are a few websites on this place, but as far as well-known ancient cities coming from the ancient United States, well, I don't think this is well-known at all. But I'm just going to do a little reading here. It says, Big Mound City is the only site from the Belle Glade culture on the National Register of Historical Places. It was added in 1973 as an example of the Calusa ceremonial complex, but it is now understood to have originally been constructed by the same ethnic group that built the Ortona and Wakati towns, probably ancestors of the Miami. And is that where the name Miami comes from? And does that have anything to do with the Mayans? Well, I'm going to make a video in the near future where I'm going to take some language and some words and connect these people definitely to the Mayans. That is where they come from. This is just a northern branch. I have mentioned that in previous videos. Well, I'm going to cement that theory in a video down the line here. This large archaeological zone is located on a geographical boundary where the Everglades portion of the Lake Okeechobee Basin meets the Pinewood Flats. It has been theorized that the location was either a convenient place for ceremonial activities or trading, perhaps both activities. The environs of this ceremonial site were flooded at least six months out of the year. The earthworks would have raised any temples or houses above the floodwaters. This is also an archaeological trait of several cultures in the upper Amazon basin of Brazil and Peru. The similarity may be evidence of a cultural connection or mere coincidence. What really makes Big Mound City stand out among large town sites in the southeastern United States are the paired earth berms that connect conical mounds of various sizes to central crescent shaped causeway that even today is nine feet high and nine feet wide across the top. The earth berms form radians that seems to have astronomical functions but to date have not been defined. What exists today are speculations that have not been confirmed by scientific analysis. Big Mound City's occupation has been radiocarbon dated from 500 BC until about 1650 AD, thus it was contemporary with the early stages of Fort Center and is older than Ortana and the Wakati sites. It was occupied for centuries after Ortana and Wakati were pretty much abandoned. So there is just a lot of questions here, but the dating seems to go back about 2,500 years. It says, within this zone are at least 23 mounds, including two or more burial mounds. The intricate geometric arrangements of the earthworks were made of yellow and white sand, except for a massive oval platform that contained extensive midden remains. It was probably the location of an elite village. Large semicircular embankment measures 1,000. 
500 to 20 feet in diameter, and that is huge and makes it one of the largest earthworks in the ancient United States. Again, there are five circular mounds within the central enclosure, all measuring 9 feet in height. Eight conical truncated mounds are connected to the embankment by radial causeways. The largest mound measures 220 feet in diameter at its base and reaches 25 feet high and I'm sure that has been eroded over time. The walls of the causeway are nine feet high. The architecture of Big Mound City may have represented practical concerns and culture, cultural influences from elsewhere. Earth and sand and shell platforms raised temples and elite residences above frequent flooding. Like Wakati and several other town sites, commoner housing was typically built on timber posts that also raised the sleeping levels above floodwaters poisonous water, moccasins, snakes, bears, cougars, and alligators. Since the 1930s, archaeologists have periodically debated and speculated the functions of the site. Recent research by archaeologists who specialize in astronomical analysis suggests that the radiating earthen berms in the archaeological zone may be aligned to celestial events like solstices, equinoxes, and other events like the rise and fall of Venus. And that would fit right in. This is peopleofonefire.com, and I'll, I will leave this link below. But this sums it up pretty well. Like other large town and ceremonial sites in South Florida, the Big City Mounds Archaeological Zone suffers from a lack of maintenance and disinterest from archaeological professionals. For example, the National Park Service's Southeastern Archaeological Center in Tallahassee, Florida, has produced a base map of archaeological so sites in the southeastern United States which is published on the web, the map completely excludes the southern third of the Florida Peninsula because the South Florida sites are so different from conventional Mississippian mound centers elsewhere in the southeastern United States. The profession appears to be avoiding the discussion of a cultural phenomenon that it does not understand. <laughs> Bingo! They don't get it. This is a culture that is different, it seems. And I'm going to tie these words of these city sites directly to the Mayans in a future video. Once again, this is what this huge 150-acre site looked like. It's a shame that they would map archaeological sites in the southeastern United States and exclude South Florida. Here is a map of all the mound sites around Big Mound City, Jupiter Inlet Mounds, Riviera Beach Mound, Mounds on Palm Beach Island, Barnhill Mound, Highland Beach Mound, Boynton Beach Mounds, the Bell Glade Mounds. So there is a bunch of them and they appear just to be lost to history. But it says periodically since at least the late 19th century discoveries and excavations have been made of prehistoric and historic sites in Palm Beach County. And it says, excavations were funded under the Works Project Administration of the 1930s and administered by the Smithsonian Institution of Washington, D.C. In the 1940s and 50s, University of Florida professional John Gogan recorded 42 sites in Palm Beach and Martin Counties. And here is a look at just a few of them. Here we have the Du Bois House on top of a mound here in Du Bois Park from the early 1900s. And here is the Charles Newcomb House, former Oaklawn House, on top of the large Indian mound in Riviera Beach, early 1900s. So there was homes built on top of these in different areas of the country. Here is some excavation of the Bell Glade Mound. Here is a hundred year old pick of the Big Mound and a little diagram of what Big Mound City looked like. But I find this fascinating. This comes from 2,500 years ago and it seems archaeologists don't want to touch this because they really can't even tell you what it is exactly. One of the things that surprised me about reading about this site is a study that was done on the deposits in this area and it seems about 1,500 years ago a tsunami rolled over Florida and probably wiped out the people living at this site and then it was repopulated just slowly and eventually. But a tsunami washing that far inland 
And that is a time period about 1,500 years ago that Randall Carlson has talked about. So I find the fact that a, a tsunami swept over Florida about 1,500 years ago, I find that fascinating. What exactly do we have here? Well, I think it's a big mystery. And even a bigger mystery when archaeologists really don't want to touch this because they can't provide any answers. So this is a perfect video for my channel in this series. Today, what does this look like? Well, it's all overgrown. There is the top of mounds and things that are discernible, but today, overgrown. Here is the top of the big mound and big mound city today. But that is kind of the lost history of big mound city, and this is where it is in present day Florida. The Smithsonian was here, and those pinheads with their blinders on. They couldn't even figure out what this was, and that's probably why it's lost to history. Hope you thought that was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.